this video, I'm going to very quickly show how to solve the Logix Pro silo simulation using a structured approach. The first thing we need to do is understand how we want the system to operate. First thing we want to do is initiate the process using the start button. After that's pressed, we then want our motor to turn on, which will then begin to convey the box down the line. Once the box reaches the proc sensor, we want it to stop, and after it stops, the solenoid valve should open and begin to fill the box, and the level sensor will detect when it's full. At that point, the valve should shut off, and the motor should restart until the box conveys past the sensor, and at that point, our cycle will start all over again. I am now going to create a graphical diagram to represent the sequence just described. The diagram will resemble a flow chart or a state transition diagram. For those of you familiar with sequential function charts, you will recognize the format. The first block I'm going to draw is the initial state, and this represents the power-up state. After we're powered up, we're going to press the start button, and that takes us into the next step, which we are going to call run conveyor at this point where we want the conveyor to run until the box makes it to the proc switch. After the box makes it to the proc switch, we're going to stop and fill the box. And after the box is full, we're then going to run the conveyor until the box passes the proc switch. And at that point, it will go back to run the conveyor again. What I'm going to do now is put a label next to every arrow showing the conditions that it takes to move from one step to the next. We're going to call these our transition conditions. After initial, as we talked earlier, we're going to use the start button. So once the start button is pressed, that's what's going to move us down to the run conveyor step. Now after run conveyor, we want to stop and fill after the prox switch is made and when we're stopped and fill we make the level switch and that will move us down to the next step which is run past the switch after run past switch we're going to put not prox and that means when the prox switch is no longer made once it's no longer made it means the box is past it and we now want to loop back up to the run conveyor step to where we start all over what I want to do now is to the right of each box, I'm going to put a label, and that label is going to show the outputs that I want to energize while in that current state. Of course, the very first one, run conveyor, we only want the motor running. Stop and fill, we don't want the motor running, so we're not going to list it, but we want our valve opened up. And then our last state run past switch this is where we want the motor to be on once again so I'm going to add the motor label the last thing I want to do with the diagram is to assign a B3 bit to represent each step It's now time to go into Logic Pro and begin writing our ladder code. I'm going to start out by inserting a rung and adding an output for B30, which represents our initial state. Now, the initial state is a unique rung you will see in the technique I use, um, but very simple. We're going to simply add normally closed contacts for each of the other states, which is B31, B32, and B33. And you'll see what this does is energize this right up on power up as it's supposed to. I'm going to just go ahead and add symbols to um, describe each bit, each, the step name, while I'm up here. Okay, so now I'm going to insert another rung and insert an output 
and label that output B31, which is our run conveyor step, as shown from our diagram previously. Now, we're going to start building this wrong by referencing our diagram, and the first thing we want to put is a set of contacts to say where do we come from to get into this state. And using the arrows, we can see the first place we come from is B30. So let's put a contact for B30. And on that arrow, we look at our transition conditions and we see it's the start button. So we're going to put in a start button. So now we're going to add a branch because we have another arrow coming into this state. And let's put in another branch and put B32. And the condition that brings us in there is not procs. So now we have what brings us into this state. Now let's add another rung because we're going to use a latching rung. And this is going to hold us in the state. So in our latching rung, the first thing we do is put in a normally open contact with the same address as the output. And after that, we're going to put in a normally closed contact that is going to basically tell us where can we go from this state. And we know B31 can only go to B32, so we only need one set of normally closed contacts. And you see what happens, it latches in, once it gets to B32, it will drop out that coil. So now let me build up B32, put an output for B32, the same thing. Where do we come from? We come from B31, so let's put that contact in there, and what condition gets us there? And that is the proc switch. So that is the only arrow going into this step. So now it's time to add our latching branch. Now on our latching branch, once again, normally open contacts with the same address as the output, so B3, 2, and we're going to put normally close for the steps that we were going to, which is B3, 3. So now let's do our last step, B3, 3. Once again, where do we come from? We come from B3, 2. So we're going to put normally open. What condition makes us move to B33. That's the level switch. So let's put in the address of the level switch. Now after the level switch put goes in there, now let's add a branch. This is our latching branch because there are no more arrows coming into this. So now we're going to put in the B33 which is our, our latching bit and we're going to say where can we go from here and it goes to B31, so that's the normally closed contacts. And there we have quickly built the states. Okay, now that we have the states built, let's add in rungs to control the outputs. So our first output is the motor. So let's put in the output for the motor. And once we have that, we want to tell it what conditions, what steps do we want this motor to be on. So let's put in a normally open contact, and the first one is B31. So when we're in B31, we want the motor to come on, and there's also another step, so we're going to put a branch in. And in the branch, let's put B33. So if we're in either one of those states, the motor is going to be turned on. So our next output is the valve. So let's put in the output, and put in the address for the valve. And then we're going to put in contacts for each state we want that valve to be on, which is only one, state B32. And that is all of our outputs. I want to quickly put in some symbols, but that finishes our output section. Okay, it's now time to test it. I'm going to download the program, put it in run mode. And after I click the start button, you'll see there it is. The conveyor runs, the box fills. Once it's full, it runs past the switch and starts the cycle all over again.